powerful telescopes of modern astronomy, like the Hubble Space Telescope, are revealing the glory of God in ways the psalmist could never have imagined. This nebula in the Carina constellation is a vast cloud of gas and dust, light years across. Each color you see represents a different type of gas, all the gases glowing in the light of newly formed stars. The wispy clouds of dust are blocking the light, creating a scene as beautiful as any sunset. Just as a painting declares the essence of the artist, so the universe teaches us about the Creator. We didn't even know this nebula existed before the invention of the telescope. All this beauty was here before humans laid eyes on it. Think of all the other nebulae that we haven't even discovered yet. God has filled the universe with an extravagance of beauty. So, how vast is our universe? Well, let's start just by considering our solar system. If you shrank our sun down to the size of a tennis ball, on that scale, the Earth would be a grain of sand about 20 feet away where Deb is standing. Pluto would be another grain of sand three football fields away. Our nearest neighbor star would be another tennis ball 1,100 miles away. And the farthest star in our Milky Way galaxy would be 20,000 times further than that. Our Milky Way galaxy has about 100 billion stars like our sun. And the visible universe has about 100 billion galaxies like our Milky Way. It's astonishing to contemplate. So, let's come back a little closer to home. Consider our nearest neighbor galaxy, Andromeda. Andromeda is similar to our own Milky Way, with hundreds of billions of stars, beautiful spiral arms, and two satellite galaxies. Andromeda is 2.5 million light years from us. That means it takes light 2.5 million years to travel to us from Andromeda. We're not seeing this galaxy as it is now, but as it was when the light left it 2.5 million years ago. Now consider a tiny region this size on the sky. If we zoom in, we find spiral galaxies that look like Andromeda, but they look very tiny, over 500 times smaller. That means that they are over 500 times further away at 1.4 billion light years. We're seeing these galaxies as they were over a billion years ago. By zooming in on distant objects like this, astronomers directly study the long history of the universe. The time it takes light to travel these long distances is one line of evidence we have that the universe is old, but it's not the only evidence. We also have lines of evidence from moon rocks, from asteroid orbits, from white dwarf stars, from globular clusters, from gravitational lenses, and many other lines of evidence. All of these tell a consistent story. The universe is old. In the early 20th century, scientists were debating the age of the universe, but they weren't debating thousands of years versus billions of years. They were debating billions of years versus infinitely old. Some scientists argued that the universe couldn't have had a beginning because that sounded too religious. But in the 1920s, Edwin Hubble discovered that the universe is expanding, that galaxies are being pulled apart with the expansion of space itself. Consider this analogy. The universe is like a loaf of raisin bread when it's dough rising. So the dough is like the fabric of space, and the raisins are like the galaxies. Just as the dough rises, pulling the raisins apart from each other, so the universe expands, causing all of the galaxies to move away from one another. Now imagine rewinding that expansion back in time. We would see the galaxies closer together in the past. Rewinding even further, the matter would all be smooshed together with the atoms packed into a very dense and glowing hot plasma. Astronomers calculate that this state occurred 13.8 billion years ago. Now that's the age of the universe itself, not just of particular objects in the universe. From this hot beginning, the universe has been expanding ever since. Now, like all good scientific models, this model of the early universe makes testable predictions. Astronomers predict that the early universe would have glowed with heat, 
like the warmth you feel from embers in a fire. In 1965, two electrical engineers, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, were puzzled by a consistent background noise in their giant radio antenna. After ruling out other sources of noise, and even kicking out the pigeons that were roosting in the antenna, they realized this wasn't just noise. They had detected the heat radiation of the universe itself, just as astronomers had predicted. This discovery was monumental, earning them the Nobel Prize and convincing scientists, even those who were initially a bit skeptical, that the universe had a beginning. This hot beginning followed by expansion is what astronomers call the Big Bang. Lauren and I believe that God used the process of the Big Bang to bring about the universe today. God was in charge as the universe expanded. God was in charge as particles combined together to make atoms, as clouds of atoms collapsed to form stars, and as dusty rings around stars coalesced into planets, some planets with land and atmosphere. Through these natural processes, God brought together all the building blocks necessary for life to thrive and a suitable planet to be our home. Unfortunately, the Big Bang has collected a bad reputation in some religious circles, primarily because some atheists have used it as a replacement for God. These atheists have put their own personal spin on a valid scientific model. They say, we can explain the whole history of the universe scientifically, so there must not be a God. But to us, that's kind of like saying, we can explain rain clouds scientifically, so there must not be a God. In fact, science is not equipped to prove or disprove the existence of God. A scientific explanation cannot replace belief in God. So we don't have to choose between the Big Bang and God. Both could be true. The Big Bang model fits the data very well after that first instant. But there's a few things scientists don't fully understand. First, scientists don't yet have a good model for how that very first instant could have happened. Second, science can't yet explain why the laws of nature are so well-suited, so finely tuned for life. For example, if the universe had expanded a bit faster, gas clouds would have pulled apart before stars could form. But if the universe had expanded a bit more slowly, it would have collapsed back on itself before stars could form. Second, the force of gravity is just the right strength. If it were a bit weaker, stars wouldn't form. If it were a bit stronger, stars would burn out too quickly. Scientists of many different religious views agree that the laws of nature seem finely tuned for stars and planets and life to develop. As Christians, we believe that the fine-tuning that scientists see is consistent with our belief that God designed the whole universe from the beginning, planning for life. So, did God create stars? Or did stars form through gravitational collapse of large gas clouds? Well, of course, both of those can be true. God can design things to self-assemble. To illustrate, Imagine I disassembled my watch and put all of those tiny pieces in a plastic bag. You could shake that bag continuously for years and the watch would never reassemble itself. It would have to be put together by a watchmaker. But suppose you design that watch differently so that two pieces that belong together will easily catch on to each other. So, if two springs or gears that belong together collide in that shaking bag, they will snap together and stay together. So, if I put all the pieces in a bag like this and shook that for a few hours, the pieces would slowly reassemble and the entire watch would come together. Now, I don't know if anybody's made a watch like that, but that would be an amazing design. Christians who study God's world scientifically often think of God's design like that self-assembling watch. We believe God designed the entire system, the laws of physics and biology, so cleverly that over time, they assemble into a planet filled with a wide variety of plants and animals in a complex web of ecosystems, just as God intended. God is not absent, but God is sustaining it every moment. It is an amazing display of God's ingenuity.
God didn't need to tweak the system again and again to make it work. He designed it from the beginning to unfold over time in the way he intended. Even today, God is still at work in the universe, still intimately involved in sustaining the laws moment by moment. God is even creating new things. Look again at this nebula. It looks opaque to us, but that's due to the dust. If we tune our cameras into the infrared, we can peer inside the cloud, look through the dust, and what we see inside are baby stars in the process of forming. Right now, God is using his finely tuned laws of nature to create whole new star systems. What an amazing privilege to be able to study how God does this, to think God's thoughts after him. God's creation is not just a long ago event, but an ongoing process where God is creating new stars, new planets, and new people.